for filing complaints uh, against police officers. Uh, with that being said, the chief uh, has the word. I'd also like to acknowledge the fact that uh, I know a lot of people put a lot of time and effort into getting to this point, and I just want to express our appreciation for people taking the time to be involved. I also have to leave in about five minutes, but I will be back in about 20 minutes because I have to escort the mayor to a location. Uh, it will be short, take care of some business, and we'll be back shortly. But I didn't want anybody to take my uh, exit as a uh, bail or not, or anybody who just uh, could be gone for a short period of time, and I will return. If, if you serve on the committee, please stand, please, so that we can acknowledge your work and say thank you for the time that you have put in to join us. Um, it has not been uh, an easy process, but I think it is a good process. So thank you very much, and you deserve uh, to be recognized for that. I would also say that um, this has probably been one of the most difficult challenges that I've had because coming in, many of you know, coming in, I've always questioned um, what we were doing as far as civilian review. Um, and I, I believe that we could do a lot of things better. Um, but I had to set my personal feelings aside and listen to the different opinions as to what it is that needs to happen. And I can tell you it wasn't easy. And then, you know, we would, would increase uh, the difficulty of that is that we continue to have uh, interactions between the community and our police department at the same time that we were trying to, uh, you know, convene meetings to, to make recommendations. And also, um, I got a better understanding from everyone's point of view. Uh, what it was that needed to happen, what it was from the police union, the chief, the community, Center for Dispute Settlement, or even some of my colleagues. Everyone had a different view of this. And we created a process that allowed for everyone's view to be heard and not to be negated. That uh, we created subcommittees that consisted of the committee for the community, um, the police administration, the police union, government, and CDS, and those um, people in those committees made recommendations, which you have in front of me that we will go over. Um, the first page, um, these were the recommendations that came out of the community committee. Um, they asked for an independent CRB. They asked for that CRB to be legislated by council mandate. They asked for a separate investigative structure. They asked for a professional advocate to be with complainants. They asked for a CRB monitor who would monitor the whole process. What is CRB? You didn't, you didn't explain what that stands for. Civilian Review Board. Board. Okay. I'm sorry. CRB stands for Civilian Review Board. Um, we, we've used the term so much, I just assumed that everybody knows. So that's, that's my, my mistake. Uh, they asked for City Council to provide the staffing of an advocate and monitor positions. They asked for all of the participants of the CRB to be city residents. They asked that the complaint in full can be made, the complaint in full can be made either at the CRB or PSS. They asked for shared information in terms of the investigation for complaints. They asked for a 90 day process limit. They asked for a written decision to be sent to the complaint at the end of the process. What is PSS? Professional Pro standards. Professional standards. Section. Section. Yeah. And let's see, where are we here? They asked for open meetings to decide procedural and advocacy issues. They asked for subpoena power. They asked for an appeals process that would come to the mayor or council. 
Um, they ask for uh, outreach, particularly to youth, but also distressed communities, that uh, we educate folks on, on the process. Uh, restorative justice and mediation, plea bargaining to be a part of that. Uh, and quarterly and annual reports. So that's what the community committee recommended. Turn the page, we had the government committee, um, where we had recommendations. We asked for monthly reports to council. We asked for um, open monthly meetings for complainants. We asked for uh, standardized questions and interviews so that it didn't feel like an interrogation for folks who were going in to make a complaint. We asked um, to make the Chiefs override credible. We asked that uh, we improve the intake process through mandatory report for every phone call at PSS. What does it mean to make the chiefs uh, override credible? Yeah, I was going to ask that. We'll, we'll get to that at the end. Just to that. Can I get to this? Okay. Um, what was I? Oh, to, to that we report every phone call to PSS. Because sometimes people make calls to PSS, but they don't actually file a complaint. That we record all intake calls into PSS. That we use clear language in layman's terms and explain procedures. Um, that the complaint qualifies as a notice of claim. That time limits be set on the process. That we create minimum staffing requirements to make sure that things move smoothly. Uh, that we have a better professional standards venue that we send a copy of the final determination letters to the council. That also we do community outreach, uh, like a video tutorial that will be shown on YouTube or the city's website to educate folks how to make a complaint, what the complaint process looks like, what types of questions they might be, be asked. Um, we also ask that the review progress during budget hearings that, that we re review the progress during our budget hearings because every year um, is when we put in the budget the, the money for the contract to provide the service so that we would review that during that, that time. Um, that there would be police training on the complaint process and that we institute a uh, complement procedure for jobs well, well done. Now, before we turn the page, you, you ask about the chief's override being credible, um, that whenever the chief disagreed with CRB, that that would come to the council for review. And if they came to the council for review? I'm, I'm, we're not I'm going back and forth just yet. We'll, we'll do that later. I was just going to ask a question. Not in format yet. Okay. Next page. Um, the Police Administration Committee uh, asked to fast track the procedural and courtesy complaints, create timetable for completion, to provide appropriate staffing for CRB and PSS, decrease time in departmental review, um, they alternate review sites that they have better outreach. Uh, and false complaint recourse. Uh, Center for Dispute Settlement asked for accessible quarterly and annual reports that will be provided electronically made through the web and other uh, locations. That we reconfigure the actual hearing room for PSS. Uh, that all uh, mediators involved in the CRB be certified. Um, that CDS classified, that one I have to come back to. CDS classified complaints. 
um, that there's an appeals process um, that an observer would be permitted in the investigation room when the uh, statement is taken. That um, there would be a confidential survey that each complaint would do at the end of the process. Um, that RPD on a group training that would be conducted by CBS. Um, that there would be an independent police agency for shootings. When officers sh shoot other people, that there would be an independent police agency to review that. And that an annual summer summary be provided online. The police union asks for an independent CRB and for a hearing officer as a final arbitrator, not the police chief. So those were the actual recommendations from each subcommittee within the committee. We did not take anyone's recommendation away or argue, we just presented what they were. Um, and then we, as a group, we could be as a larger body, and these are the points of agreement that we said that we would recommend to the council as a group, that we would provide a community advocate, that multiple options for intake and investigation be provided, that members of the CRB must be city residents, that there would be a timetable for investigation, that there would be a case update letter sent every 30 days to a complainant. Um, that a monthly progress report be provided to the council. Additional conflict resolution training for police. Additional community outreach. Additional youth outreach. That we overhaul the intake process that we fast-track procedural and courtesy complaints and disciplinary details shared with complainant in a general disposition. So these are the things that we agreed upon as a group that we thought should happen. Um, we have some remaining issues uh, that we were not able to address, and I'm not sure if we'll be able to ever address some of them. Those issues were an autonomous CRB with an entirely separate PSS and CRB investigation. Um, filing a complaint will satisfy the notice of claim requirement to avoid the statute of limitations um, issue. That separate reporting for complaint injuries, um, that there would be a different reporting for that when, when people were injured that we would standardize the intake uh, questions. This is an issue of whether to treat the complainant as a traditional investigation or in a more complainant-friendly manner. And procedures for evaluating multiple separate complaints against an officer. Um, there was a request for greater access to officer and investigator files, as well as mandatory reconciliation programs because of our collective bargaining issues, both access to officers' files and recon reconciliation procedures must remain as they are. So what that means in terms of what we are, are recommending, we're recommending to have an independent CRB, which we do have today with Center for Dispute Settlement. They are an independent body, they do not Again, I don't repeat myself. They are an independent body. They are a separate organization. Okay? Two, we are asking that they hire an advocate. CR, the CRB, I'm not saying the agency because we are going out to RFP on this. That we're asking that they provide an advocate that would have the authority to sit in uh, interviews and stop them when they thought that they weren't in the best interest of the complainant. 
We are also uh, going to have uh, an appeal process that would go to the council. For those of you who have another big issue is subpoena power. Subpoena power will stay with the council. That's where it's always been. And in our history of doing this, we've never been asked to subpoena any files from the Center for Dispute Settlement about our police department because they couldn't get the materials that they needed. So I want to be clear about this. The people do have subpoena power through the council. It exists. No one has ever accessed it, but it does exist. Um, and our rationale for making these changes, if you turn to the budget sheet, which is the second to last page, Um, Syracuse has a model where they have a separate CRB, and we ask for our budget office to cost out what that would cost taxpayers. This does not include the separate PSS that some folks were advocating for. This is just the separate CRB piece. This would not include the investigators. The cost of that would have a range between $200,000 and $230,000 a year. I estimate if we did a separate PSS on top of that, then we could be talking about $500,000 a year total. Um, if you turn to the last page, which is the budget page for the Center for Dispute Settlement, you look at the first column that says CRB budget. If we did nothing different, if everything remained the same, no changes, that first column, the cost to taxpayers is $97,000. The recommendation of the committee is to add the advocate position uh, at $41,000, giving us a total of $138,000 annually, which I think we believe that the city could afford to do. Um, there are also, the police chief, I was hoping he would be back by now so that he could present uh, some of the changes that are happening on their side, but I, I will go through that. There's a page that says civilian review board recommendations by committee. It's a table. And there are a number of changes uh, that came out of the process on their end that they decided to do on their own that does not require legislative action from the council or mayor. Uh, the first one was multiple options for intake and investigation. Um, that was, they committed to do that and the start date of that is September 1st. They also agreed that members of the CRB should be and must be city residents. Um, the third thing was the timetable for completion of investigations and determinations. Many of you who are sitting in this room have heard stories about some of this lasting 18 months, two years. They're saying that for serious uh, uh, complaints, that they want to get that down in 90 days. And for minor procedural complaints, courtesy complaints, 60 days. Um, the, the case, that they also agree that a case update letter should be sent every 30 days, and that is now in place to complainants. That uh, a monthly progress report be provided to the council, uh, including a copy of the final decision letters given to complainants. Uh, they agreed to do that, and that would start September 1st. The overhaul of the intake process, meaning we would have different intake options for folks, whether it was through a form, <clears throat> electronically, at a library, or in uh, our atrium downstairs, or you walk into uh, the CRB or PSS that people did not have to just go to one or two. Now there would be a form that would start that process. Um, that we would fast track the courtesy complaints that starts on September 1st. 
uh, disciplinary details would be shared with the complainant. Um, and there are some arbitration rules about that, but as much information as we believe that we can give legally, we will, and that will start September 1st. Detailed quarterly and annual public reports, uh, which we do do now, but they're more of a summary, we have improved that, that will start September 1st. Um, that the staff can be appropriate, that they would have six sergeants and one lieutenant, Right now, I think you guys have five sergeants, but we would increase to six, and that would start September 1st to make sure that we can get through the investigations fastly so they would not last long. That, that we would create a new PSS venue that would be friendly for people to go to so they didn't feel uncomfortable. They agreed to do that. That date is to be determined because we have to find the money and location for that and also look at possible designs. Um, and the final authority for discipline stay with the police chief. That's in place already. And that's discipline of the officers. Um, and then turn to the next page. That the, these are things that basically are part. Um, Legislative CRB will be approved by council. That's going to happen at some point. Um, additional conflict resolution and training for police is part. Uh, community outreach as to process with youth component. It's a park issue. Um, standardized intake questions. That's a park issue. Autonomous CRB is a park issue. Separate PSS and CRB investigation part issue. Um, the uh, filing complaint satisfies city's notice of claim. Um, that's a part issue. The appeals process, um, that's not a part issue. Uh, it's just on the form as a part issue, but we had some discussion last night in our council meeting about that. Uh, the creation of separate subpoena power that will remain with the council. The consequence for false filing, um, there would be no consequence for that. Uh, the accused officer granted access to investigative files. That's a collective bargaining issue. We have no authority uh, to, to make a decision on that. And mediation, restorative justice, justice plea bargaining component would also be a collective bargaining issue. So now I'm, I just have a couple of comments that I want to share with you, and then we're going to uh, let people come up and, and, and talk, which I think is important to do. And I thank you for your patience as we're going through this. Um, I, I really um, believe that we really need a community advocate uh, for those of you who have gone through the process, you know it can't be an intimidating thing for people who have probably just experienced a traumatic issue with an officer. And so by having that community advocate with that person, we're hoping to make that less um, of a traumatizing um, situation. That um, the CRP monitor position should be Definitely considered at a later date, not just part, but that at some point we really review whether or not we can find the money to also pay for that position. Um, I believe the city council should take a more active role in the oversight of the process um, that will create the autonomy that the community seeks. Um, right now, I, I can tell you as a council, we've kind of been at arm's length with the process. Um, that the implementation for the agreed upon changes would be evaluated every six months to make sure that we were doing these changes and that they were working as they were intended and if not we would go back and make adjustments. That the CRB committee should reconvene each time an evaluation is done for additional discussion. I think that's very important. I believe that the notice of claim requirement should satisfy 
um, when a person files a complaint. That's my belief because right now you only have 90 days to file that notice of claim against the city of Rochester. And any of you who have gone through this knows that that 90 days can go pretty quickly. And I think that if you have a file of complaint, that that should notice, serve as that notice of claim against us. Our legal department disagrees, but I understand why, but this is my personal feeling. Um, that complaints where injuries have been sustained should be fast-tracked. That that should be taken very seriously before uh, having an encounter with the police and, and, and have an injury. That that should not be treated lightly. And that the complaint intake process should be preceded by a plain language explanation to the complainant of the process from intake to decision. And the community advocate must be uh, present at all intake sessions or uh, interview sessions. That they are there to ensure that people feel comfortable, they have questions, or if they need to intervene on behalf of the community member. So um, those are, are my comments and thoughts. And uh, I guess we can start with the uh, public addressing us. The first person will be Teddy Loria, followed by Luis Monte. 